Hey everyone. I'm so excited to paint the Tom the Turkey painting with you guys this morning. Can you believe it's almost Thanksgiving? I can't. It seems like we were just looking forward to Halloween, but here we are ready to paint some Thanksgiving and then jump into Christmas, which we've already been painting some, but um, welcome. I'm so glad you're painting with me this morning. And when you get on, just say hello and um, tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what you've been painting. Um, this is a pretty simple painting we're going to do this morning. It's really fun. It's a great project for the kids. If you want an activity for Thanksgiving, you could just give them the tracer. I'm just going to paint mine this morning on a piece of canvas paper. So it doesn't have to be on a canvas. It could be on any surface at all. But um, I'd love to see the kids take a shot at this because it would be so much fun. So say hello. Hey, good morning from Texas. Listen, if you see that um, disclaimer from StreamYard about um, giving permission, that allows me to see your name. I only see you as Facebook user right now, but if um, anyone would like, just give that permission, but you're still able to chat. You can tell me who you are in the in the chat even. But um, yeah, so we're going to do the Tom the Turkey. I've got my fall colors out again because we've been painting fall things. Yeah, pretty basic palette. I just took out what I have for fall colors, my oranges, my burnt orange, my golds, browns, black and white. I've got an ivory. I like ivory a lot. You can mix an ivory, of course, just a little bit of brown into your uh, white, just tones it down a little bit, and not, not so cold as, as the white. Uh, I'm gonna use white for some of the decorations on his feathers, but I do use um, the ivory a lot. So I'm gonna use that for the background. We're gonna do a super easy little, almost like a buffalo plaid look background. Um, and I know Buffalo Plaid's huge still in the red and the black and all the colors. Good morning, Barbara. I'm heading to Florida on when? Next Saturday, a week from today for a couple days, down to Orlando to visit my family. Um, so we're going to do that Buffalo Plaid kind of a design, which you can probably incorporate into other paintings, of course. We've painted a zillion pumpkins this season. These guys are teeny. They're, they're a breeze. And then the details. We're going to start with the background. We're going to do just basing in the colors on our elements, which are our pumpkin and our turkey. Uh, you know that the acrylic paints aren't always the best coverage. Um, so we're going to do a few coats. So remember, when you are um, base coating in your things, let it dry really well before you throw that second or third coat on. I don't see your name. No, I'm sorry. But um, just... Just tell me who you are in the chat and maybe next time when you come on when that disclaimer comes up um it just allows me to see your name it doesn't do anything with your information or anything um it's just a stream yard thing uh so be patient when you're base coating a nice smooth coat don't try to put it on super thick so it will cover better do it nice and thin let it dry another coat if you need to you can have your hair dryer or a heat gun or something handy if you're impatient like me sometimes and want to just hit it with that uh, so this is what we'll be. We'll be uh, just putting all the colors on. Then we'll add the little details. Then we'll add the eyes and the mouth, um, the little buckle on the hat band and all these little decorations. I painted this up and he looked just a little blah. He needed a little, mm, a little pizzazz. So I did this little decorations, which you could do of any sort on his tail feathers and just use these bright colors. So I think we'll just get started. Um, I'm going to remove this banner so you guys can see the whole painting. And if you have any questions at all, I have the comments here. I can answer anything as we go. So please just put them in the comments. And if you would like, just, you know, pop in and say hello anytime. I love to see the interaction with the group. So let's get going. Background first. I'm going to put my sample right here. And I am, like I said, painting just on a little piece of canvas paper. It's on a canvas pad. And it's kind of nice if you don't want to uh, commit to a whole canvas at first. Once I paint the background, you'll see it a little better. I'm just going to paint my background in that ivory color. Just going to use a flat brush. I'm going to use my synthetic. It's just a synthetic uh, flat. It's probably an inch or a three quarter. Um, it's nice for background work. And I'm just going to paint around my turkey and around the pumpkins. Do not fear if you are not perfect around your little edges. I know my tracing is light. <clears throat> These are all darker colors that are going on the turkey. So I am not gonna struggle with a little tiny brush to go around everything. <clears throat> I'm just gonna put my ivory paint on there. It's great because it covers in one coat, the ivory on the white. So just do your best with whatever brush you're comfortable with and just outline your turkey. 
same technique as if I was painting on that canvas, the stretched canvas that I usually use. I did for my sample. Oh, feedback. Sorry. Hang on. Let me see what I can do about that. Um, I have everything as it should be. Is everybody getting feedback on me? Because I can't really even hear myself. But let me know if there's feedback all around. And I'll see if I can. Let's see. I've got my volume down. I've got my volume off. Oops, sorry. You don't want my big hand there. Um, so if you could just let me know, you guys that are watching, how the, how, the, how the sound is. And I will see if there's anything I can do on my end. Usually it's pretty good when I go through StreamYard. I usually don't have any too many issues if I plug in my headphones and uh, turn my volume off. But let me know. Could you, um, I know Barbara says this feedback, so you guys let me know if you, if, if it's uh, not coming in well. And I'm just going to go around his little feet. The techie gods sometimes do not cooperate. I'm going to just continue to outline, and then if it's still bad, I will see if I can change any settings. Got lots of people watching this one. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're hearing me twice. Okay. Let me just get this in there so that it will dry and I can paint that plaid. And I will take a look at my camera and see if there's anything I can do there with helping you out. Is anyone besides Barbara? Yeah. I, um, and you're both watching on Facebook, right? Hmm. I wonder what that glitch is. Okay. I've got that little base coat in. I'm just going to unplug these headphones and plug them back in. See if that makes a difference. All right. I'm going to keep going along. Let me know if that's uh, going to be an issue. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let that ivory dry. It's actually drying pretty quickly. How I do that buffalo plaid look is I just take a brush about the width that I'd like to make the stripe. So any flat brush, if you were using a thin stripe, a thin, a, a smaller flat brush. But I just took, I think this was like an eight flat synthetic. And that's what I used for my stripes. Now, they're not perfect. They shouldn't be. Don't worry and stress about getting a perfect, look at how wiggly, mine are wiggly a little bit. I didn't try, I didn't measure them out. I just, I like to paint my stripes sideways. So I started and I would just go down and then I'll turn it and do it this way. It's pretty watery. I watered the paint down and you know why? So that I would have enough on my brush almost if I try to, to do the entire stripe. Actually we have to, we can stop and, and start again, but I like to have it watery and a little see-through. Can you see how it's a little see-through? And then when I do the second, pass here it gets a little darker in that middle of that square which is what sort of makes that buffalo plaid um i do go back and i deepen it a little bit if i need to but if you were doing this in a color you'd really see um how nice the little middle squares come out a little darker so i do water that paint down i, I simply um go into my white paint take some clean clean water pull some to the side i want it more like an ink consistency and this is what I do when I do any detail work as well. I want to keep the paint really thin. And uh, when I go with my detail lines and things, it flows nice. It's not stopping and starting, which would make you try to press down harder. And then you get this wide line. Keep any detail work thin down, just, just with some clean water. So I want this to be more like almost watercolory looking. I want to see through this. I want to see through the back. And then I just start. And like I said, I, I do it. Uh, sideways when I'm doing some long stripes, but whatever is comfortable for you, whatever way you're comfortable working. And as I go, I'm probably going to dip in and add water to this as I go, because I really want a nice thin line. And I'm just eyeballing. I'm going to start about a brush width in. So I'm not going to start at the very edge. I'm just going to go in a little bit, and I'm going to just go right down the canvas. If you 
have to pop onto your turkey. It does not matter because we're painting that a color later. I'm not able to get enough paint on my brush to do one long stroke. So I will just keep going back with the thin paint and just painting that in. And can you see that's, I know it's wet and shiny, but it's pretty see-through. This is background stuff, so do not stress. Just put it in there and all the other elements on top are where people are going to look. This is just a subtle background, so we're not going to get worked up about it. So I'm going to just skip about another brush width, load up my brush again, and if I feel like it's a little thick, I'm just taking a little water. Worst came to worst, it's too light, you can lightly go over it. I'd rather have you put it on a little light than have it too heavy. Um, and stiff, I want it to be, I want this to be see-through for this technique. And actually, you know what, I'm stopping. I kind of went too far down onto the bottom. I think I'll stop a little bit short. Uh, on my sample, I went all the way down, but then I covered it with a wash. But I'm going to, this time, just go down through my turkey and stop at maybe the pumpkin there or the base where I'm putting a little shadow so that he has something to stand on. And even if it's just a little bit poking through, you still go across, still just eyeball a brush width, and, and that's where your next stripe is going to start. Just eyeball that brush width. And while this paint is a little wet, I know it's shiny and it's hard to see, but I'm going to hold it up for you so you can see as I go along. And I'm just going to go right across the canvas with those stripes it's very subtle it's ivory on a white on ivory i wanted it that way i want it to be barely noticeable so that your turkey will pop if you had something really dark back here or something very busy your eyes not going to know where to, to focus when when the viewer's eyes you know when they're looking at your painting you want them to look at your turkey so there i've just gone right across with those stripes if you would like, you can even let this dry a little bit before. You just don't want to put your hand down in your wet stripe. So whatever method of working works for you, take your time. This is all being recorded to you guys. So you do not have to sit and catch up and watch and keep up with my painting. That's why I like recording everything. After this is done, I download it and I will post it on the page. If you're in my Cardist group, you will find it on the page, but you'll also find it in the guide for, oh, geez, we're in November now, the November guide. Easy to find. And you'll find the tracers and the color palette links all there again. And I know some, guy, some of you are following in my private group. I have a private free group as well called Learn to Paint with Cheryl. I put a few little tutorials on there and, it's a nice community. It's actually artists helping artists. So if you are not a member of that group and you just follow me on the Tinker's um, cart page, I put a link at the top of the page here if you can see it. If not, it's Learn to Paint with Cheryl on Facebook. You can find me pretty easily. And I'm just going to go and just repeat what I did in the other direction here. How many people are, are painting along this morning or are you just watching? It's always interesting how people's different methods of learning. I'm better at watching and maybe watching a couple of times if I need to, and then implementing what I've learned, but having the video to go back to for reference. But everybody has a different way of learning. So, okay, so it's subtle, I know, but you can see it a little bit. So I've got my stripes going both ways. I'm going to let it dry. When it's dry, I am going to go with a heavier white and just same brush, same size, and just make the little squares a little brighter. But we need to let this dry. So let's let that dry first. And now we can start filling in our elements. I am going to grab another flat brush, and I'm just going to start filling in. I think I'll fill in the turkey feathers first because they're furthest back. Then we'll do the turkey, and then we'll put the hat on. And we can base coat our pumpkins in some orange. So these little tail feathers, you may use the colors I chose, that palette. But if you want, you could do anything. You could do turquoise and pink, and you could make this a real funky painting. But I'm just going to fill in now. I chose uh, three colors, and then I just alternated them. I started with 
like a yellow ochre, a golden ochre sometimes it's called. It's just a little bit more of an earth tone than your bright yellow. And I'm simply gonna paint those in. And I do have to turn my painting every which way um, when I'm painting. But so these are just being uh, filled in. Now, some of the colors cover really well. This ochre color covers great because it's really kind of a goldy paint that has some white in it. And white always helps with the opacity. So I'm just gonna skip, you know, I'm gonna do three colors. So I'm gonna skip over to this and just do all my gold first, which is covering nicely. When I get to that lime green, I think it's a little bit more transparent and it may require more coats than the yellow. Okay, one, two, three, let's go over here. I think I, one is sort of hidden behind his neck. So we are skipping, I'm looking at my, at my um, reference. I believe this one is a gold right here. Just going around the face a bit. And if you do have lots of kids over for Thanksgiving, you want to keep them busy, you could just put this on, on paper or on like a Bristol board or whatever. The canvas pan, you know, the canvas boards are great for the kids. And you could trace it on, throw out some colors. Oops, I just dipped that into the black. And they would have a blast and you'd have a little memory, a little memento from Thanksgiving 2021. We could bring them out each Thanksgiving. It would be kind of fun. I love things that my son made when he was little. We, you know, you you all do that. I'm sure the Christmas ornaments with the fingerprints or the whatever. There's so much fun to look at now that they're growing and grown. And this is kind of just busy work. I know it's sort of paint by numberish, but it's really relaxing sometimes. You know, if you could put on a movie or a, some music that you like and just kind of escape the everyday world for a little while and come out with a piece of art, which is great, right? Okay, so the lime green next. And then we're just gonna work our way around. They're just these little fan shapes. They're not all the, they're not all exactly the right same size. It's a little tougher to find things to paint for Thanksgiving. And I didn't want to do a realistic turkey, so I thought a whimsical, fun turkey would be cute. You could paint them on little cards and use for your place settings. All sorts of little projects. Okay, now we've got right to the to the right of each of the gold, we have the green. So we'll just do this little one green here. It's a little wider, but we are not really worried. We're not striving for perfection. If it was a photograph, it would be perfect, but we're not trying to copy photographs. We are just painting and we want it to look handmade. And we've got a green here. Starting to seem like fall here in New England, but we still have some nice color too, though. Still very pretty out there, and we haven't had too much of a cold snap. We had a little bit, but now it's back to mild, which is unusual, and I think we even have a 60-degree day again coming next week. Actually, the other day, when what day was it? Wednesday. It was the same temperature here, Barbara, as Florida. We were 64, and I think you guys were 64. Okay, our green is in, you can see it is a little more transparent. When it's dry, I'll go ahead and just put a second coat on that. Oh, Barbara, I'm thinking about the, the echo. I wonder, do you have a couple of um, Facebook, you know, maybe the Facebook and the YouTube are two pages open. I sometimes get that when I go on live and, I'm, and then I start recording. It's in two places on my computer, so it's coming through. I have to close one of them. I don't know if that 
might be an issue. Actually, I went into my orange here. It, usually, it should have really been my um, burnt orange. I made it a little bit deeper. So um, this is a lime green. This is a burnt orange. It's a little lighter than a burnt sienna. It's a little deeper than my orange. It's a nice fall color, nice earth tone. I use that quite a bit. You could use the brighter orange. And like I said, you can use whatever palette you like. Sometimes when I'm doing a painting, most times, I will design the color palette first and stick within those colors. So I don't have colors all over the place. I will narrow it down to four or five colors maybe. But then I can always use, you know, mix those colors with black and white and get different variations. But it's the same color palette and it really ties your painting together nicely. It makes it a little bit more comprehensive. Um, it's just a nice way to paint sometimes when you're designing paintings. So if I wanted to do this, like I said, in those funky or those tropical colors, I would just pick out maybe three. I've got the three, you know, the burnt orange, the lime green here, and the gold. You could pick out a pink, a turquoise, a lime green. It would be a fun, put a little palm tree in the back. It'd be really a fun little painting for uh, Thanksgiving in a tropical place. So I, um, I don't think this is actually how they line up behind here, but I just did both of these little guys that are peeking through in the burnt orange. I'll probably do a quick coat of burnt orange when this dries too, just to get it a little more solid. Sometimes we want to use that transparency to our benefit if you are painting water or different things. Sometimes I do leave that that way, but I'm going to put um, another coat on the, maybe on all of these guys. I can see a little bit can see it's a little see-through, but that's the nature of the acrylic paints. So, okay, I'm going to continue basing in my colors. I'm going to base my turkey in. I have his head and neck a lighter brown and then dark brown down here. So what I have out for brown is my burnt umber. I'm going to lighten it a little bit with a little bit of ivory for the neck and head. And then to deepen it for the body, I'm going to add just a little black. Um, I may switch to my smaller brush. I'm just doing what I can with my flat. You might want to switch to a smaller brush. I will shortly, a little round perhaps. And I'm painting the entire head and neck in, in just this lighter shade of brown, which again is just my burnt umber with a little bit of ivory or white. Um, paint around the little beak area because that's gold and it'll be easier and it'll show up a little brighter if you have the white underneath. And you see I'm kind of turning my brush, my flat brush parallel sometimes and using it, just the chisel edge. You can get a wide, wide stroke with your flat brushes, but you can also get a thin line depending on how you hold your brush. If I have it on a chisel edge, look at the nice thin line I can get. So right now we're just base coating. We'll base coat all these bits in. We'll do a second coat and then it's ready for fun with all the details and whatnot. So this little neck area is just going to get the light brown paint too. I just do a little scallop here. I can emphasize that more when I do the second coat. But that's my light brown. I'm going to go into my dark brown now. I'm going into brown to brown. I'm not going to even wash my brush. I'll just wipe that light brown off. Scoot a little bit of black into my burnt umber to get a nice dark brown there. So it's just a little black into the burnt umber. Seems like I am using a dark brown a lot, and I never seem to find one in the bottle. I mix a lot of my colors. I'm always just mixing my dark brown. It covers nicer when you get a little bit of black in there. And on that note, you do know I lots of times will mix my colors just from my primaries, and I try to teach you guys that. And share that information if you don't have all the colors because it's fun to have all the colors. I go into the craft store too and I buy all the colors because they look so cool, but you don't really need them. You can mix pretty, you can mix everything from your primaries. So watch for, I do have little tutorials here, here and there about color mixing and whatnot. But again, we all have our favorites. I have, I always love this lime green. I use it a lot. So I bought it in the bottle, but super easy to mix just with your regular prime, you know, with, with a nice green, you mix some yellow and a little white, you get that same shade. But for convenience sake, sometimes it's nice to have them all, the colors that you use a lot, all 
on hand. So the turquoises that I like, I have on hand. I love that golden ochre color, the lime green, whatever color phase I'm in at the moment. I have been in a big turquoise color phase this summer and this fall even I've done a lot of turquoise in my paintings. This is covering nice. I probably don't need a second coat because of the black and being so opaque. This one is good to go. So just paint that in. And that will be good. We will do, let's do his little legs. I'm gonna put this aside. Actually, I'll rinse that off because I'm not gonna use the dark again. I'll be going back into the light brown. I'll give that a quick rinse. I think I'll go real quick now and just do those little squares since I'm waiting on this brush. And now I'm taking solid white. I'm not thinning it down this time. And I'm just going to place it where these two stripes crisscross. They're just little squares. And because I'm using this brush that is the right size, can you see I'm just popping them in? And they're brightening up. And now that gives it that buffalo plaid look. So just go wherever they have crisscrossed. Paint in. It's not a perfect square shape. I'm just pressing the brush. And it's maybe a little rounded on the edges. I don't care. I just want a little dark bit and it covers better when it's dry so wherever you can see some of them are a little hidden don't worry but where you can see it just give it a little pop of bright white i'll hold that up too so you get a closer view but try it with some other colors because if you're say doing it on the black i mean the white the excuse me red background with the black you'll get that nice buffalo plaid look Then the paint down for the stripes and then just go back in with solid paint for a second coat. And I think that really, what do you think? I think that does give you that buffalo plaid look, right? I think so. Okay. Now, We'll fill in the pumpkins and his legs. I use the round brush for that. I think it'll be a little easier with a round. Um, just a little. Again, I'm using just the synthetic brushes, which really do the job. I'm going to do the golden ochre for his legs. Um, they're inexpensive brushes, but if you treat them right, you're going to get a lot of painting use out of them. So it's important especially on the smaller in the flats, maybe not the big, when I'm using my big bristly brushes, I do a lot of damage and really am scrubbing around with those. But these little ones, you want them to keep their shape. And, and to do that, you need to keep them rinsed off with clean water. And know it's a pain as you're painting, you're like, oh, but I'm going in that color in a minute. And, and of course, do as I say, not as I do, because I'm sometimes we'll just put it aside. But it's best to really rinse it off because if you don't, it takes just no time at all for that paint to harden up in the ferrule here. Um, once that happens, all your little brushes, hair seem to splay out. And it's hard to get a nice point or a nice chisel edge back. You can try, there's a way to save some of your brushes is if you've got some of those crazy hair brushes, and I know I've told you this guys this before, um, is to dip them or run them into like boiling hot water. Then maybe with a little soap, a little ivory or something, you can reshape them. The, the ivory soap acts as the sizing and it kind of puts the point back in. So if you have to rescue some brushes, that might be a good way to do it. But if you can, it just takes a minute. I just rinse them off and dry them. I don't want water up in the ferrule either. And now I'm going to go in and with the same color, the burnt, uh, the yellow ochre color, I'm going to paint the beak in as well. So I just did his little legs, little feet, crazy little legs, but I love the little knobby knees, right? And then I'll just go around that with the light brown. But I was, since I have it on my brush, I'm going to put it on the beak and I'll, and I'll quickly just do a quick second coat on those uh, turkey feathers. When I do the second coat, I don't worry about getting it perfectly to the edge and, and worrying too much about where it is. I'm just going to put it more in the middle of those feathers so you'll see. So that's there. That actually covered pretty well. So I'm just going to quickly just do a second coat. There's going to be a lot of design work on top of these. You're not going to look at them that close. But if you see where it's a little streaky, you can just put a second coat on there quickly.
But yeah, if you take care of your brushes, they will last a good long time. Okay, so now let's get that on there. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a dark orange for my pumpkins and then I'll just lighten it up with some white. So I'm just gonna fill in the pumpkins. I'm not gonna worry about the stems right now. We'll just fill in the pumpkins. It's really nice when we get all these little things based in. Then, we, like I said, it's the fun part. Once we're done, we'll give a little shadow under the pumpkins and under our turkey, just to give him a ground to stand on so he's not just hovering here up in the air. So just paint your pumpkins in. I'm doing orange, but have you seen there's so many cool um, pumpkins out there with white or turquoise? <laughs> I, I'm tempted now. I, I won't this year, but next year I have to make a note on my calendar to paint this in that tropical. You could do the turquoise pumpkins, and wouldn't it be fun with oops with a whole not fall scheme color scheme? Okay, so we filled in those guys. I'm gonna work upside down so I don't put my hand in those pumpkins. A quick little coat of these other colors, turk. Uh, Lime green especially is one that is very transparent. So I'm just going to do a quick little second coat on that. I did them, like I said, this way. And then afterwards when the painting was done, I thought, geez, it just needs a little something, something. And I said, oh, let's start adding dots and stripes and bands of color to the tail and that really did the trick. I think it came out kind of cute. And just that burnt orange, second coat. There. Alrighty. Why don't I get the face done, put the color on, and then the hat, and then that will be ready to start doing the fun stuff. So we are going to do that light brown. So again, I just mixed up some ivory with my brown for that little bit lighter shade for the neck and the face. Get his cute little eyes on after. And that's covering pretty good. Sometimes it's easier for me to see it in the in the video than here in front of me. Okay, so I'll do that little bottom of the hat with the round brush because I have my hand and it's a little smaller area. So I'm just going to do this in black. Black is great, it covers so well. I'm going to paint the black over where the hat band is because it'll be too hard to cover. So I am going to skip that little stripe and I'm just going to fill in the top of the hat. And that'll fill in nice and quick with the square brush. And then I'll paint my little band in, which is that burnt um, orange, that darker orange. And again, I'm telling you the colors I'm using, the colors that were on the sample. You do not have to follow that at all. You could do whatever you wish. I just dropped a little drop of black here. So something like that, you get a little dot of paint somewhere you don't want it. You can just take a little clean, clean water on a clean brush before it dries and just scoot it off. If it does dry, don't worry. You can always paint over it. Uh, alcohol is good for removing some color. So sometimes if it's a dark color on something I don't want it to be on, I'll just use a little um, rubbing alcohol and it just takes it off. Okay, 
the hat band. So we'll just fill that in quick with the burnt orange and then it looks like all of our elements, the green stems will cover pretty easily. So I'm not worried about base coating those, but now the fun will begin. And I'll paint the little buckle afterwards on this. There's a little buckle on his hat. There we are. Okay, so that's covered. As they dry, if there's anything you think needs a second coat, or perhaps the, the hat band, we can do that. But let's start with the fun stuff. Let's go down to our pumpkins here. I style my pumpkins, even if they're big, uh, more detailed ones, I will put those little lines in that divide the sections. This might be a little wet, but I'm gonna just take some of my brown with my, with my small brush. And I just wanna start by giving myself an idea where these little um, sections are. It's just those little bumps on the pumpkin. This little pumpkin is gonna be in front. We'll make a shadow after to emphasize that. So I am just painting those in fairly quickly. And now I'll go in and fill in with some orange. I want to blend. I want to have a little bit of orange and, and some gold, and I blend wet and wet. Now this orange has dried. I've got my little lines in here just to give me my sections. That paint's drying pretty quick on this canvas paper especially. So what I'm going to do is just go back in with the orange that I used and just one pumpkin at a time because that gives me time to blend. I'm just going in each section. Now I'm not worrying about getting it real close to the line. I'm not spending a lot of time. I just want to re-wet that orange area so that I can shade and highlight it. I'm going to make it a little darker on the bottom here. So I'll take some of my burnt orange from the bottom up. And can you see if I put it up there now, it starts to blend right in with that orange that's wet. So I got my color there and now I'm just blending it up into that wet paint. It's going to start giving it a little rounded look. And then I'll skip over here and do these guys and come back and then emphasize it a little bit. But I just wanted to get a little bit of a blend there. Let me take a little brown because it's a little um, hard to see for you guys. I want you to see a little bit more of how I shade that a little bit. So you can see how it's just a little darker on the bottom and I just brushed it up. I do the same thing on the top with this gold. I have this, it's not a bright yellow, it's not a primary yellow, it's more on the gold side. So if you took your yellow maybe and mixed a tiny bit of white in it, you get it toned down a little bit like that. And on the top, I'm doing the same thing. I've just taken a little brush load of that yellow from the top and just stroking it down. It's going to be a little lighter here. And I want to do it first wet and wet so it blends. I'll come back and add a little more to it to, so you can see it. But now it's blended nicely. If it doesn't blend nicely, you can always go back into your orange and in the middle kind of soften it. But... I think that's good enough for these small little pumpkins. And we'll do these two now so you can actually see me do it again. It's not complicated. It's just go in between your stripes, re-wetting just the orange that we use for the pumpkin, putting it on a little thick so that it have time to blend. I'll put a shadow here after to show that that pumpkin's behind and I'll really highlight this one in the front to show that that's in the front and then it will come forward. But I quickly now just added the wet paint again. Now I'll take my darker, and this time I'm taking my burnt orange, but I'm gonna mix a little brown so it's a little darker. I want it a little darker, and I'm just going to come up from the bottom, and it will start blending. If it blends too much with the orange on your brush, just go and collect some new paint, and just, oh, that shadow I was talking about, I just put a line of that darker brown around that pumpkin. See how it already is set back because of that little shadow? And then I'll soften it a little bit. And we'll do the same on this guy on the bottom. I was just gonna put some dark coming up. And again, I just keep reloading my brush if I lose the dark. There. I'm gonna wash off my brush because I'm going into the lighter gold now to highlight. So I don't wanna use that dark brown, have that dark brown on my brush. Taking that lighter gold, same technique only from the top, bringing some of that down. I'm kind of going in between those lines. Now remember I said I wanted this one to come forward. I'm taking a lot of that yellow there. I'm going to put it right on that left side. And look at that really is helping that pop forward a little bit. I'm going to, like I said, emphasize this a little more after I paint the stem. But can you see just even though they're small, they've got 
orange in the middle, a little bit lighter on the tops, a little darker on the bottom. Their little stems actually are going to be a darker green. So I'm going to just grab my, like a dark forest green, put a little of that out just to paint those stems. I like to make them kind of curly cute. You can make them any way you want, but I sort of just go and I like to make these little curly stems. So whimsical painting and that adds to the whimsy. Just dark brown for now, just put them in where you want them. This one's just a little bit. This one I did another little. So you can see I do them a little bit thinner and then at the end I give them a little bit of a thicker look. The only thing you need to shade on those is a little of this lime green. So I take a little lime green on one side. If it's not showing up, you can let it dry a little bit. But I just like to have lights and darks, highlights and shadows on top of my colors. If it's a tiny bit of the element here, I might not have both, but I have lights and darks on the pumpkins. So I just dry brushed a little bit of um, that lighter lime green on there. If you really want to stand out, you can take a little white. I'm not going to put it everywhere, but I'm just going to hit it here and there with a little white. I'll hold that up too closer so you can see. And it's just some darks and lights. Just from a distance, it just looks like it has some dimension to it. So I'm going to go back. These look pretty done, but let me just emphasize the darks and lights a little bit. So I'm going to the same dark. I've taken a little burnt umber and a little bit of burnt orange. And just from the bottom up, if it needs a little additional shading. May or may not even need that. But if it's got lost, you can do that. And I do like to give a quick little highlight of that yellow again, just on the tops right here, just a little something. If that doesn't show up, and actually it is showing up fine, but if you found it's just blending right back in with your orange and not showing up, teeniest, tiniest bit of white, and you can really get it to pop if you need to. But that's a lot on just little tiny pumpkins that you don't really need to spend too much time on those. But that's a good little method if you want to paint little pumpkins on anything. For his legs, again, I want a light and a dark. So I'm going to do a shade of brown along the left side and then a little white on the right side. I'm going to take that same dark I think we used. I watered it down a bit because I want to do more of a wash than a blend. It's going to be hard to paint those legs gold and then blend in that tiny spot, light and dark. So I have just taken that brown. I've added water to it. It's more of like a watercolor wash. I'm just running it down the left side of the leg and maybe on top of the little toes. Left side of the leg, around the little knobby knee down, and a little bit on the toes. That is the dark. It's a wash. Um, don't even have to really blend it. If you want to, you can just draw your brush off and soften it. If you have time, the, the paint is still wet, but it kind of goes on there pretty blended. I'm doing the same thing on the other side of the leg with white. I got a, a little bit of clean water, a little white. I'm going to just thin it down a bit on my palette, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just running it down the right side, follow the shape. You can put hit the toes a little bit if you want, and uh, sometimes it's very watery and it just blends in, which is okay but if you need to you can just go right over it with a little heavier white it's still very wet and i think it pretty much blends by itself i think that's all you need i don't think i need to really uh, blend too much it just gives it a little roundness it doesn't look like it's just flat on the paper so that's our little legs what i did up here is just a little scallop design i did it two twice i did it with the watered down white first so i've watering down my white i'm just using a little round brush you could use your liner brush if you wanted. It's very thin. And I just started and made scallops. They're just little scallops. I hit it really thin the first time around. And then I looked at it and I thought, well, it's not really popping. So I did go with some high, heavier hot, high white. I'm not really sketching this on. I'm winging it. 
Again, it's just a little whimsical painting, but if you were more comfortable, you could just take a little piece of just ordinary white chalk, chalk your lines in, and then when you're done painting, those chalk lines erase pretty easy if you didn't cover exactly. I've really thinned the paint down, and you can see how far I can go without having to reload it. It's pretty thin down. You can just go down as much as you want. And so because that kind of dried light, I went back with just more solid white. I didn't do the whole scallop. I just underneath some of them just went with a stronger white. I'll show you on the sample. As you can see, I did it really see-through, and then I just highlighted a few, just little U-shapes on the bottom. If you think it needs it. Now, you might not need to do that, but whatever you think it needs it. And again, you could use your liner brush or just a little round. And that's all I did for his body. It just looked like it was a little blank. It needed a little something. So that worked fine. I am going to go upside down for a minute and just put a little more burnt orange. That little hat bin was a little transparent. So I'll put that in there now. And when it dries, I will paint my little buckle on there. And I actually have a tiny, tiny bit of metallic gold. Well, I should have put a tiny, tiny bit. I put too much, but I'm going to use a little tiny bit of metallic gold for the buckle. I did shade the face and the neck a little bit. Same sort of idea like I showed you with the wash. I want to go back into my dark brown that I used for my belly, which is just the burnt umber and some black. And see, I'm really thinning it down. You know it's hard on that dark color to see, but I'm adding, I'm adding a good bit of water, and I'm just getting some that's really more transparent. And again, I'm just going to go on the left side with the darks like I did for the legs and under the chin. So it would be a shadow under the chin and down the left side. It might be easier if I put it right side up for you guys. So I did under the chin, down the left side. So wet, it's not gonna dry right away. Give me some time. Take my brush, dry it off. Just get a nice dry brush and just soften it where the harsh line is. You're just softening that and it's just a little shadow. It gives him, makes him look a little rounder. And same thing on I'm going to do the left side of the face and also under the hat. So it's it's kind of like a little rule of thumb when I'm painting on this guy. It's the left side, but if it's under something, a shadow is being cast. So under his hat, I'm going to do that dark as well. You can just lie, lay in your dark and just soften it with your, with your brush because it's so wet. If I really need to soften, I just will again, just dry that brush off and soften that in. Perfect. I'm going to give a little bit of a lighter highlight on the other side, but first I'm going to just plug in my computer so we don't lose um, power here. There. Thanks for your patience there. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to just, just like the legs, even though they're small and the turkey's bigger, we're going to the same premise. We're going to just take some of that light brown that I made up and thin it down. I use a couple of techniques, no matter what I'm painting, for giving shading and highlighting. If it was my oil paints, it would blend unlimited, you know, I could just blend it anytime, have as much time as I need. You gotta be a little speedier with the acrylics. So the couple of methods that I use are wet and wet, a little bit like we just did in the pumpkin, or a wash, which is this technique. They're both the same in the, in the, in the way that I lay the color in, but it's the blending. When it's a wash, I just dry my brush off, and I just soften. And if it was wet and wet, it would be similar. I would lay the colors down wet and wet. You'd have the lighter brown, the real light brown, and then softly blend with a dry brush. But because of the little bit of room there is here, it's a little whimsical painting. This works fine. So you see, I'm just taking that thin down light shade of brown and just on that right side of his face. And again, it's almost blended perfectly, but if it needs a little help, just take your dry brush and soften it if you think it needs it. So that just makes it that, doesn't this face look like it has a little more depth and, and uh, like I said, roundness? The beak does get shaded as well. That's kind of dull. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit with, let's see, if I mix some white with my yellow. I want to get it a little brighter in the middle. So I'm just taking some white into my yellow. 
I'm going to just, he's got a little um, beak. So I'm going to just draw it in with that light color. So it looks like that. You can always just put, put that in with chalk or a pencil if you need to. So up in here, it's lighter because the light's hitting it. So it's lighter up here. I actually think I want to just put the tiniest little tad of my primary yellow. It's a little brighter already. It's just looking a little dull. I'm just going to pop in a little brighter yellow there. This is on the top of the beak pretty much, which means since this is on the top, the light's hitting it, underneath would be a little darker. I'm going to use just my burnt orange to shade under there. See how that looks. If I need to add brown, I can, but. So I, again, I'm just taking the watery line of color, drying off my brush and softening it. So here we have this little blob of yellow ochre, but look, at it's now starting to turn into a shape. I might go up across here a little bit with a little of that dark. When that dries, we're going to put on just a little black detail line, which again, thin down paint, or all those little detail lines too, you can also use paint markers for, which is kind of fun. It'd be great for the kids too. They could just do paint in the main bits and then use paint markers to decorate. Okay, so it has that little waddle thing on the side, you know, this little weird turkey thing, which in some paintings, I just don't even like the look of them, but you have to put them on. So I tried to make this as unobtrusive as I could. I painted it in with the burnt orange. It's hard to see there, but it's painted in with the burnt orange. And then to highlight, I put a little bit of light orange on one side, and I put like a, look like I use a red or something, but I'll just use brown because I have that out there. But let's let the dry a little bit. Eyes are fun. They're just googly eyes. I am going to thin down my white because it's more detail work. And my white has been sitting on my palette for a little while now, almost an hour now. And so it's a little thicker. So just thin down your white and just put in your eyes. They're big, starey eyes. You could look up whimsical eyes and Google it and maybe find eyes you like better. They could just be little black button eyes. I did these little ovals of white. If you like the eyes I did, I'm just doing ovals of white. I'm gonna fill in that white a couple times because it is thin down paint so that I can get a nice shape, but I wanna cover it more opaque. So I am just gonna make the shape. And now as that dries, I'll put a few more coats of white than the black eyes. I think I gave him like little You know, looks like little mountains, a little U-shaped over his eye with the burnt. It's not burnt sienna, really. It's more the burnt uh, orange. That's enough of detail on his face for the moment because we want to let that dry. The little hat, the hat doesn't get shaded at all. The hat band does. And how I shaded it was with the white on both sides just to make it look rounded. I just took some white. I've thinned it down and I've painted it in on the edge, dry off the brush and just soften it. And then you can build that up. I'd rather have you do it really light. And then you can always get it brighter as you go. But if you start it too dark, it's hard to take the color away. So I'm just putting it in on both sides. And then, like I said, if you want to deepen it, just a, you can just dry brush a little heavier white there, very softly, blend it as you need. And that's just a little too much. Okay, so I paint my, whenever I'm doing gold metallic or even silver for that matter, I paint in the base coat first. So if it was silver, I'd use white. But because this is going to be gold, I'm just using my yellow ochre first. Lots of times the metallic colors are a little translucent and just having that base to put the gold on the metallic after it just helps it show a little bit. So this is just a little buckle there. And when that dries, we'll just pop a little metallic on it. And as I see things drying, like with the eyes, I'll just put another coat. Just to cover that up, because we are going with the lightest color over something pretty dark. So a couple of coats of white. I know he looks a little bit like a zombie now without, but we'll let that dry and that will uh, be fine. So on my little waddle here, I want it to show up a little bit more, although I don't want it to be the center of attention. I'm taking my orange, but I'm going to lighten it up a little with white so that it shows. So it's a little white going on that right side. If it was facing you, it would be the right side. But 
I'm painting it up here so I don't put my hand in something wet. That makes it show up just a little more. It doesn't have to be jumping out at you, but it gives it a little shading. And I have a marker over here. I'll use my brush, but again, when you do your little lines for your details, you can certainly use a paint marker. Um, I like the Posca markers, there's different brands, and it actually has paint inside. It's not just like a Sharpie, it has paint inside. Sharpie would work for this too, especially if the kids are doing it. But um, these pens are cool because you can get some nice control. Uh, so what I'm getting at is we're going to do some detail on the, on the little beak. So I'm just thinning down my black paint so that I can put in just this little line for his beak. It kind of curved in a little bit. And then it has two little nostrils, just like little commas. And that, and that um, white is dry, so I just go in the middle of the white and make two black circles. And again, you can use all kinds of different eyes. You don't have to use those same eyes. And then I outline it with black. I always give it a little highlight. His eyes are looking really wonky here because I'm using a brush that's really too big. But once the eyes are done, I always pop in a little white highlight, a little white dot. Let's let it dry because it's not going to take yet. But I always want to get that little dot in there. All right, so he's pretty cute. He needs all the details on here, which are super simple. So I'll show you that, but you could always um, use the markers too for that. So I use my I go back to this little uh, flat brush that I used for the stripes, and I use my thin down white. Just to always have a little cup of a little bit cleaner water aside, although that doesn't look too much cleaner. But anyways, it's a little cleaner. And thin down your white, like we did for the stripes. And what I'm going to do is with that thin down white, I am just going to make some scallops with my flat brush like that. I want to be able to see through it, so don't worry, <coughs> excuse me, that it's not covering. You want it to be a little transparent because it's almost like a little look, lace look, right? It's light, and then I put the heavier white details on the top. And they'll really show up. I did two layers of those. I just did a band there and a band here. And I may go get my markers because it might be, I might be able to do that with my white marker too. So, so another band there. That's how I started. I did a little wash like we were doing of dark brown around his body. Just going in that dark brown. I've got that watery paint again. Let's go around his body. This is going to be feathers are behind, so it's going to give a little bit of a shadow on the feathers from the body. And can you see I just put that on kind of watery, and I'm just using this dry brush to soften. And it just places a little shadow there. Wet, watered down paint. Dry off your brush and soften the two, you know, it's really not two colors, soften that brown into the background color. And that just gives you a little shadow there. I then took some, I have the brush in my hand, I go right back into that dark brown, and I did a few little detail lines here. Um, give that a second to dry that side because it's blending with my wet paint. But I just did a few little detail lines. I'll bring this up close for you to see. I did a few little detail lines. See those little strokes coming up? So do those next. I did some darker bands of color. Again, when I was talking about the color palette, how I use a color palette, I stuck with the same sort of shades, just different, you know, I, I'm using green as one of my colors in my palette, but I've got the lime green, but then I go in with that more forest green, and across the top of those green bits, I just did these little U-shaped strokes. That's for the green tippy tops there. And I also did it above both of the white areas. So what I did is carried that across and I would just do a darker shade on those other panel uh, feathers too. 
So I think I used the burnt orange on the gold. So we'll just go into the burnt orange now. And just above the white and on the tippy top, little strokes there. See how it just finishes it off and it just gives them a little bit more detail? It's kind of fun. And then for, I didn't have much to show up on that darker burnt orange, so I just went and used the dark brown. The brown with a little black mixed in so that it shows. So it's just, again, the burnt umber. A little black in there. Uh. Okay, we don't have many of those orange ones. We have the little ones right here. And there, this is the fun, the little details are the fun part. The little dots, now, you can do little dots with the back end of your brush, or if you have one of these little dotting tools, either one, just go right into your white paint. And above on these tails, feathers, I just did little white dots like that. Let's see if you can see that kind of. They're kind of small. I could always use, let's try the back end of the brush maybe. See if they're any better. Yeah, I like them at the back end of the brush better. If your dots aren't coming out well, mix a little water with your paint. If it's too thick, you might get a weird shape. But uh, it's a nice technique to do dots of all sizes. Because if you needed big, big dots on something, you could just get a big, wide brush with the back end. That would make a big dot. So you don't have to struggle with the brush trying to paint perfect dots. So I did white across the top here. Again, use any colors you want. You don't have to follow my palette. You can do whatever you wish. Those are getting a little wonky, so we'll get some thicker paint. I'm trying to get paint just in the right consistency there. So then I moved down and I just did other colors. So for the green, actually, no, I did all brown, I think. Okay, I did all brown here and then all the light orange here. So let's get a bit of our brown. And I just am following the shape of that curve. As you, as you lose this, this, the paint, you just can kind of keep reloading that. And just watching out where the wet dots are because they're a little thicker and they do take a little longer to dry. I know it's a little tedious watching me make all those dots. You could speed up on the recording. And then like the bottom row I did with the light orange. So I'm going to see how that orange, it's actually a light orange. I say light orange, but I think I'm going to use just the orange here. Let's see if it shows up. Yep, it's really not lighter than that. I was just thinking I had to mix it with some white. If it doesn't show up well, you can mix it with some white. Doing this little dotting method keeps the paint rather thick, so it should show up well for you. Oh, well enough. I mean, I don't really want it to be, again, jumping out. It's a design as a whole. I don't want the little elements taking over. I think I'm going to lighten up that little beacon in a minute, too. It looks a little dull to me there. So at the end is when you really absorb observe it, stand back from it, maybe even leave it alone for a day, go back to your painting, and if it needs a little something, you'll you'll see it. Uh, okay, so white marker, if you wanted, would work fabulously, but I'm, I'm not going to keep you while I go hunt for a marker. I'm going to just paint it with my white paint, and the little details on these white bands is detail, so I am thinning it down like I had told you. Then when you try the first stroke, you'll know if it's thinned enough or it's too heavy or it's too much of a wash. And I put a little bit of a heavier white band on the bottom. See, that's a case where it was just a little too transparent. 
I want that to show up. So can you see I'm just doing a little heavier white line on the bottom of the bands? Oops. Yeah, that's right. Above the dots, a little white band. You could actually do the white first and then the dots if you didn't want to be a little worried about hitting the wet dots or just wait a little bit. And then the last thing I did was just the same thing with that white. I just made some stripes on top of that white bits. And you guys will have the photograph to go by too. So some of this detail work, you know, you can get a closer look on the photograph. And we do have our little metallic buckle still. So we'll do that next. And then highlight that beak. And then we'll take a look. Oh, the little, we want to do a little shadow on the bottom, which is kind of a wet and wet technique, uh, washy technique too. So let me show you that. Just gives a little ground, like I said, under him so that he's not just free floating in the air. And any questions? You guys have any questions at all? Let me know. Just put them in the comments. And even if it's after the fact and it's on the recording, you can always reach out to me, make a comment. I, I try to keep an eye on them, but or just reach out by direct message. Any questions? I am happy to answer. If you have any issues as you're painting, I am here. I'm going to lighten up my little beak. Actually, I'm going to put my two little dots in my eyes since I have white. Don't mind my wonky eyes because I really have a brush that's a little too big here. And I would outline those in black too. Maybe a Sharpie or a little paintbrush. I wanted to lighten up. I'm taking my yellow that I had. I brought out that primary yellow, cad yellow, with a little white. I just needed it to get a little brighter on the top of his beak. So I'm putting that in. Just scumbling. I'm just taking a little bit of, on my brush and just sort of scumbling. And I'm going to even add a little white because this I really want to be on top. Maybe at the very bottom, this is a little rounded here. You can study the picture. That little bit of orange got a little lost on the side here. We could just put that in. This little buckle is going to be metallic gold. Just going over the yellow ochre because it just makes the gold yellow, uh, the metallic gold stand out a little better. And you can even give it a little white highlight if it needs a little pop. Just a little bit of white on there. So that's just the buckle. It's just a little white on top of the metallic gold, if you'd like. Oh, so shading under here. I'm going to go back to the flat brush that I've been using. The semi-clean water, but you'd like a little clean water. So the flat brush is just loaded with water. It's not dripping. It's just some water on there. I'm going to dip the corner of it in two. This is two ways to do this. So I'll show you this just for fun, and, and I'll show you the way we were working, too. I dip just the corner in the brown. I'm going to pat it out a little bit. And I'm just going to give a dark brown shadow. It needs a little more pigment. So I'm just going to go under the pumpkins, behind him, under. So the pumpkins get a little shadow underneath. I just want to give them a little something to sit on. So just like we did with the little round brush, we laid on a washy bit of color. I dried off my brush, and if it needed to be blended, I just soften it with the... So I did it with the flat brush with the color on the side. But if you'd like, you can just take your round brush like we've been doing, a little wash of brown across, under, and then just soften it in. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, kind of cute. Just for the, for the holiday coming up. So if you're looking for a little Thanksgiving project, uh, this little turkey is, is really fun. And I really appreciate you guys watching me this morning. I will download this and put the recording up. 
And so you can all watch it at your own pace and everything. And also, if you guys want to be notified, I know I stuck it up in the comments, but if you guys want to be notified when I go live, um, text me at that number. That's my number. You can always shoot me questions or whatever if you if you would like as well. But if you text me at that, I'll add you to my list. And then when I go live, because um, sometimes I just do it at the spur of the moment, I will send you a little message so that you can tune in and watch. So thank you guys for watching. Any questions, let me know. And I can't wait to paint with you again. So have a great day. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.